Okay, we are live now. So welcome to our webinar today um, for this really exciting topic. This is a first of its kind. We're having a subject-based webinar, which means we're going to focus specifically on, on a certain study subject rather than our more general webinar. So we hope all of you in, um, enjoy it. And thank you so much for joining. Um, as usual, we have a presentation for you today, but we also have more than one presentation. Today's a very special webinar. So we have some special guests, which you can can see here. Um, so we have some special guests that are going to host a presentation for you. The first one is Alan Cordell. He's a manager of recruitment um, and a manager of recruitment and admissions at the Carl Benn School, which is the mechanical engineering college of the Karlsruhe Institute of Technology or KIT. If you don't know, um, Karlsruhe is in the state of Baden-Württemberg, which I'm sure you know um, or have heard of. There are some very uh, popular German cities there like um, Heidelberg and Stuttgart and Karlsruhe as well. Um, and we're, he is going to present a Bachelor's of Science in Mechanical Engineering, an international Bachelor's of Science. And we have a second guest speaker, which is Professor Dr. Joachim Gebel, and he is the Professor of Process Engineering and Thermodynamics at the the Rheinwald University of Applied Sciences. Um, uh, the Rheinwald University of Applied Sciences is located in North Rhine-Westphalia, uh, which is in the west of Germany, very close to the Dutch border, if you don't know it. And he has a bachelor's and master's program of mechanical engineering. But please feel free to ask whatever questions about mechanical engineering and studying in Germany that you like. So before we get started today, um, I also want to make sure that you know we are going to provide you with a general overview of mechanical engineering. Maybe you know you want to study it, but you don't really know the details. And that is going to be presented by one of my German University's co-founders, Tobias Bagman. He's here and he's going to do our overview presentation because he studied mechanical engineering in his undergraduate. So he has some experience and he's going to lead us through. Um, so for now, we'll go ahead and say um, goodbye to our guest speakers. You will see their faces again shortly. So just so you know them and you see that they're here, they're going to now turn off their, um, their cameras and their mics going behind the scenes, but they are there looking at the Q&A. So please send questions if you like. Just shortly in a moment, I will post um, the link to the course website so you can already start browsing their programs and preparing your questions for them shortly, okay? So again, they're looking at your questions in the Q&A, so feel free to send them. Before we get started and before I send it over to Tobias, I want to briefly um, introduce my German university and give you a quick one to two minute overview of what we're doing. Um, for those of you who, who are new to my GU um, or you're joining for the first time and you want to know, well, who is this lady and what is she telling me? So I live in Berlin. I'm joining you from here, and I've been in Germany for six years. I came also originally as an, an international student. So I did a research fellowship awarded from the Alexander von Humboldt Foundation in Germany, which is a funding organization. They typically fund more PhDs, postdocs, and awards. Um, but I was funded from them to do a research fellowship in Berlin, where I focused on cybersecurity and data protection. Following that, I did my master's here in Germany as well, where I studied international relations and global governance. And now I work to help students do the same thing that I did and come to Germany and pursue their dream study program. So um, that's a little bit about me. So, you know, I have a, some expertise in the topic of coming and not knowing any German and just moving here. But what exactly is my GU and what are we doing? Are we a university? We are not. Are we a scholarship organization? We also are not. But we are here to provide you with scholarship information and provide you with information on how you can find your perfect degree program here in Germany, whether it's taught in English or in German. So we are the largest database of English taught study programs with more than 2,000 bachelors and masters. Um, but we're also today, we will provide you with some information on where you can find German top ones. The information on our website is applicable to any student who wants to study in Germany, regardless of the topic or in what language you want to study. We have more than 60 comprehensive articles that discuss in detail different facets of studying in Germany, from applying for a scholarship to applying for a visa to writing a motivation letter and so on. 
And finally, we host free webinars just like this one for you over different topics like um, strategic application strategies, um, now our new subjects webinars, scholarships, and more. We also have an important COVID-19 webinar we host once a month, which provides you with all of the information and latest updates with the pandemic here in Germany, as well as travel restrictions and any changes to the German higher education system in the admittance of international students to their study programs. Okay, and we are based in Hamburg. Well, um, our, we're headquartered in Hamburg, let's say, but our team is international. I am originally from the US and I live in Berlin. So my colleagues live all over the globe from Brazil to Spain to China. And we have also someone from Georgia. So we're quite an international team and we host webinars in different languages. Maybe you've seen me in one of the Spanish webinars, which I also help host. So we have a big team to help you with all the information on studying in Germany. So now mechanical engineering, I'm gonna pass it over now to Tobias and he is going to give you a really great overview. Pay attention to the chat even though you can't use it because we'll be sharing some important links and the first ones I'm going to send are the course websites for our guest speakers. So take it over Tobias. Thank you, Jasmine. Well, hi all from Hamburg. I'm the co-founder of My German University, and it's a great pleasure to co-host this first um, webinar on mechanical engineering because I actually studied mechanical engineering too at Technische Universität Darmstadt, that's near Frankfurt, and I took my four diploma. So this was in the ancient time before the bachelor's master system. So let me just switch my screen so that you can see the presentation too. So here we are. And in this first, um, yeah, first part, I want to uh, set the foundation for all you need to know about um, mechanical engineering in Germany. So, opa. yes. So, um, as uh, Jasmine already told, we will have some special guests in the second part of the presentation. But before, I want to show you some, uh, provide you some basic information about um, the overview, which study programs are offered in Germany in mechanical engineering and how to find the right university and a study program in this subject. Later on, we will pass it to our two special guests um, whom you already got to know. So, how many mechanical engineering study programs are there in Germany? Well, as for um, if you are interested in German taught programs, you should have a look at the Hochschul Kompass, which is the higher education compass, the official database um, offered by the German Rectors um, Conference, and you will find there approximately 700 degree programs for mechanical engineering. So, the main Offers are German taught, but there are also yeah, 41 programs in English according to the higher education compass or 65 according to our database because we actually research the information directly on the university's website. That's why we have um, more study programs in our database than the higher education compass. But to gain an overview of um, the subject, I highly recommend you take a look at our subjects page, which you find uh, at this URL. Jasmine, maybe you can share the link with our audience. Um, just click on the menu bar, subjects, and then mechanical engineering, where you will find a beautiful content-rich um, page with all the information. So as for mechanical engineering taught in English, we are talking about 65 different study programs offered by 41 universities. And right now I want to highlight some key facts of that page so that you will uh, get a first idea about mechanical engineering taught in English. Tuition fees. Most of the programs are offered um, with no tuition fees. Um, as for Karlsruhe, the KIT in particular, please take uh, pay attention to the fact that in Baden-Württemberg you have to pay tuition fees if you come from outside the European Union. That's why the numbers for non-EU citizens are different. 
you, um, there are two different intakes per year. Most of the programs start in September or October, which is the winter intake, uh, but um, approximately 33% yeah, um, of the programs have a summer intake too, which is in March or April. The language requirements vary from university to university. On the subjects page, you can also see the different scales. So the minimum IELTS band um, required is five. It goes up to seven. And the TOEFL scores vary between 70 and 95. But please make sure to contact the university of your choice directly, because oftentimes they don't specify the exact uh, IELTS band or TOEFL score or Cambridge level that you might need. On our subjects page, you can also find the different rankings, um, the top 100 worldwide or the top uh, 250 in the national rankings. But I also want to uh, yeah, emphasize the fact that you shouldn't overrate these rankings because they mainly base on reputation and on research output, but um, they show only one part of this really complex uh, offer that you will find in Germany. Our pro tip is that you shouldn't um, let yourself be guided just by fees, rankings, names or cities or so, but please look for the right university profile and study program. And to provide you with some information how to actually do this, I want to dive a little deeper into the different university types that you should know in Germany. The first um, university type is just called university or in German Universität. And um, you will find the most renowned universities among them, such as the technical universities or TU, which have different names. You might have heard about the TUM in Munich or KIT in Karlsruhe. Sometimes they are also called University of Technology, uh, like our um, TU in Hamburg. Um, but some non-technical universities offer the um, mechanical engineering too, for example, the University of Duisburg-Essen. And those universities um, offer approximately 40 programs in mechanical engineering, so it's the majority of the programs offered. The second university type is called University of Applied Sciences, or UAS. Or in German, Fachhochschule FH, Hochschule für Angewandte Wissenschaften, HAW. And this university type is a little more tricky to understand because in most of the countries worldwide, this university type doesn't exist. I will just um, explain to you what the differences between the university types are. But yeah, please keep in mind that the University of Applied Sciences offer also um, yeah, 27 programs in our case, and you will find different denominations. Some are called actually technical UAS or TH in German, TH, or simply universities of applied sciences as our yeah, second guest uh, from um, Rheinwald. So to start with the different university profiles, let's recap what the two university types have in common. And this is uh, pretty much. So first of all, you need to know that both university types offer the same undergraduate and graduate degrees in general or in our subject. So you will find both bachelor's and master's at the universities and the universities of applied sciences. These degrees are recognized in the same way and they also have the same value. So for example, in terms of employability, you won't find any difference. But what are exactly the differences? Well, one important difference is that only the universities have the right to grant the PhD in general. There are a few exceptions, but this is, um, as a rule of thumb, is a main difference. The second one is that the universities focus on research. So those of you who want to dive deeply into theory should take a look at the universities. And um, oh, there seems to be a problem uh, with my screen. Uh, I need to decrease myself. <laughs> this should work better now. Um, 
Yeah, so I was just talking about um, yeah the research focus that the university have. So if you want to dive deeply into theory, have a look at the universities, whereas the universities of applied sciences focus on the application. So if you want to become a practitioner and actually know how to apply what you learn, um, yeah, take a look at the UAS. And just to give you a practical example, the professors that you will learn from are different, they have a different background. The university professors are highly trained for research. They have written two big books, the PhD thesis and the habilitation, which is a kind of a second big research project. Whereas all the professors at the UAS need to have a practical background, at least three years of experience in industry. And another difference is that usually the UAS are much smaller, on average 5,000 students um, in comparison to um, yeah, three times more at the universities. So now we've um, been talking about the university profile, but you should also take a look at the study program profiles. And I'd like to distinguish three different kinds of programs. Um, you will find general mechanical engineering programs that have just this denomination. You can also specialize inside them, but they have a more general approach. Um, secondly, you will find really special mechanical engineering programs such as automotive engineering offered by RWTH Aachen University, where you can study um, cars, <laughs> simply put, in a really intense way. Or you will find interdisciplinary programs in this example, uh, a program in Hamburg that combines mechanical engineering and management. In all of these cases, please make sure that you actually meet the qualification requirements because they can be really tricky and hard to match. So this is one of the main recommendations that we have. And this being said, I'd like to um, yeah, uh, pass the word to uh, Alan Cordell, who represents the KIT in Karlsruhe, which is located near Stuttgart. And um, it's a technical university public with approximately 24,000 students, highly internationally, highly renowned. And yeah, I'm looking forward to what Alan um, has to tell about the Carven School at KIT. Thank you, Tobias. Hello, everyone. My name is Alan Cordell. I hope you can see me and hear me. If you have any issues seeing or hearing me, feel free to write in the chat, and I'll try to take care of that as soon as possible. Um, so today, I'm going to talk to you a little bit about the KIT, the Kaiosko Institute of Technology, and our English Language Bachelor of Science program. We offer two programs, one for a Bachelor of Science in Mechanical Engineering fully taught in English, called our Bachelor of Science Mechanical Engineering International. And we also offer a German language program for Maschinenbau, which is going to be the German version track of this program. They differ slightly, so I'm going to focus more on the English language option here as it's more geared for international students. So as mentioned earlier, we are from the KIT. We are located in the city of Karlsruhe, which is a nice city in the region of Baden-Württemberg here in the southern part of Germany. We're about an hour away from the metropolitan region of Frankfurt with this international airport and roughly about a half an hour away from the French border. And here in this picture in front of you, you can see where our campus is located in the city of Karlsruhe. With about 300,000 uh, plus people, it's a larger size city in Germany, but it's still very student oriented as the KIT has a very large student body. As mentioned before, it's around 25,000 plus people and we are growing from year to year. So that means that we are a significant part of the city and the cultural landscape, also the physical landscape. In this picture in front of you, you can see actually the heart of the city of Karlsruhe, even though it's a highly modern, well-developed city. The middle of the city is actually a park. And in the middle of this park is a castle. Directly across from that is the KIT and the Carl Benz School of Engineering, where students live, study, and work. So some of the first things you see when you are going on your way to campus will be a picturesque German fairy tale castle. Your Instagram will look amazing. All right, let me talk a little bit about um, so student accommodation options. If you're actually living um, 
on campus, which is an option if you are studying in the um, Carl Benz School of Engineering program. We do have on-campus dormitories for students, which is actually an exception when um, you think about it, because most public universities do not have extensive on-campus accommodation options. So students can have a single or a double room. Um, they also have the opportunity, of course, um, so to live with cohorts from all around the world and to study in uh, an environment and live in an environment with the people who they study with, which is quite important. Um, also um, interesting is going to be, uh, so the people who are affiliated with the KIT, the KIT has a longstanding tradition um, of engineering, particularly mechanical engineering, as is one of the subjects that's been formalized as an area of study here in the KIT. Um, we also have quite an extensive list of notable alumni and people affiliated with the university. Um, particularly when people think of the KIT, one of the things they of course think of is going to be automobiles. Um, as it is well known that Carl Benz, um, the man credited with the patent for the first automobile, um, was affiliated with uh, the KIT. And everywhere you go, you will be able to see quite a lot of information um, on Carl Benz. And uh, even our English language program is going to be named in honor of him. So that should explain our affiliation here. All right. Um, we also have some other famous people, such as, for example, Emil Ritter von Skoda, um, the founder of Skoda Works. Uh, we also have, of course, people from other um, engineering industries, such as um, August Thyssen from ThyssenKrupp, and of course, um, so Hertz um, and uh, so Daimler as well. Additionally, we also have some astronauts who are affiliated with us and some Nobel laureates. So. This should give a little bit of context as to um, so what uh, so you can experience when you're going through with the KIT. All right, um, let me talk just a little bit about. Uh, all right, let me just talk a little bit about um, what you can study here in our Bachelor of Science Mechanical Engineering International program. So for the first four semesters, that's the first two years of our three-year Bachelor of Science course, you'll have an introduction to the core competencies that every mechanical engineer needs to know. As mechanical engineering is one of the widest fields of engineering, you'll get a lot of areas of competency that are taken from um, that are taken from other areas of study. So that means that you'll really have a solid foundation in engineering fundamentals. And that's very important for when you want to go on to do perhaps higher studies, or if you want to work in a diverse array of jobs and not limit yourself at the beginning of your studies by going too far into a specialization course. Now you'll have things such as advanced mathematics, material science, so applied chemistry. You'll have physics, specifically heat, uh, so wave and quantum physics. You'll also have an introduction to things like computer science. You won't be learning Java or website programming. You'll be learning programming for machines, for robotics. So you'll learn something a little bit more engineering, practically oriented, such as C or Python. You'll also go on to have classes in areas um, in the higher semesters that'll focus more on what you as an individual want to go into, such as um, something that'll prepare you for a specialization. Now, in our um, university, we have three English language specializations. Three more are coming on the way, but I'm not allowed to say anything on what they are just yet, so it's top secret. Um, but the three that we do have right now are global production management, which is a combination of robotics, business, supply chain technology, and logistics. So you'll learn more about the business management side of um, so engineering. We also have automotive engineering, which is no surprise because we have the longest any tradition of automotive engineering technology in the world. If you like anything that moves or explodes, um, this is definitely the program for you. Um, you can go into automotive engineering and this is definitely well established with the region here. Energy engineering is also a possibility where you can get more into power grid management, electrical engineering, or renewable energy solutions. Now, these are some of the options for the students who wanna study in the KIT. If they wanna have supplemental courses, throughout their studies in order to give themselves a more well-rounded profile. We of course have classes and things such as international project management, um, so academic writing. You'll also be able to take um, intercultural communication classes, which is very important because our program is about 90% plus international students. So international and intercultural communication is going to be a daily thing for you.
Um, with languages, you'll have, of course, business English, but more importantly, you'll also be able to access German language courses. We have German language courses from A1 all the way up to C2, which is near native level, which will give you the ability to actually perhaps go and transition to doing your master's in German. We offer an English language and a German language master's of uh, science in mechanical engineering. And many of the students actually do feel confident enough if they stick with the German language regimen and get some work experience to perhaps later on transition over to a German language master's. I actually did that myself as an international student who came from the US. I learned enough German to where I was able to adequately study my master's completely in the German language. All right, um, for students who are looking to get admission to our program, there's direct and indirect admission. That depends um, a lot on if you meet the admission criteria, so based on your school leaving certificate and your background. Um, but students who um, might not meet it in full will have to complete a foundation year. Um, but instead of having a foundation year, we actually have a pre-semester, which is an eight-week course. So you can actually cut that real short, and that's right before the beginning of our studies. So before your first semester, you'll come to us for eight weeks, and you'll have um, so a comprehensive course in English, math, chemistry, and physics. And at the end, if you pass this exam, you'll be able to participate as a regular student from the get-go, starting from the week after. So that is one option that's available for you should you um, be looking to study in Germany, but you are worried about passing this um, so hurdle of getting your school certificate um, completely recognized. Now for our admission criteria, if you're looking to study for us in English, we will have to have proof of English language proficiency. You can either do this by submitting a declaration of English language proficiency via our online application portal. Um, you can also do TOEFL or IELTS. We accept those scores as well. Traditionally, we've accepted the SAT as a um, admission requirement, but for the past two years, due to the ongoing situation with COVID-19, the SAT has been suspended as an admission criteria, which does mean that um, in the future that might be subject to change. But if you do have an SAT testing score, uh, we look at SAT testing scores 1,200 and up. If you have an SAT subject test and physics score, we look around 400-ish. Um, additionally, when you are applying to us, we take a look at your letter of motivation, one to two pages, and it should be comprehensive, and it should pretty much cover exactly um, why you wish to study with us. We would love to know a little bit more about yourself and your interests, and your interests specifically in science and engineering. Um, now, one final thing is our application period. We have one application intake period for our bachelor students. That is going to be running from December of every year until April 30th. As we are a public university in Germany, that means it's a hard cutoff date. If you don't have your application done in full by April 30th, you'll have to wait till next year and redo it. So do try to get your applications into us on time. And if you have any questions about the application period, always feel free to ask me. Now, there are some fees and costs that um, are covered here in the program. So it's a three year, six semester course. If you are studying here at the KIT, it's 150 euros a semester for your matriculation fee. Non-EU students will have to pay 1,500 euros extra in order to study in the state of Baden-Württemberg. This is a separate tax and this has nothing to do with the university. Now you can also participate in a college program where you would get supplementary courses, access to um, exclusive on-campus housing and additional benefits. This would be an extra 7,000, but this is an additional option. So if you want to know more about the additional option, feel free to um, ask me. So once again, it's um, 150, 1,500 for non-EU, and you can separately also book the CBS college program. So you're going to be looking at around 150 to 8,650 a semester, depending on what specifics you wish to have. Our program is fully taught in English and um, our application deadline is April 30th of every year. Um, if you have any questions, please feel free to write them in the um, so Q&A function. I can see that some of them have been here um, and I will take a look and I'll answer those periodically through the next uh, so section. But thank you guys for listening to my presentation on the KIT and our English language program. If you wish to know more, you can, of course, always reach out to me as well as there is my email address. My name is Alan Cordell, and thank you very much for listening and for participating. You've been excellent. And with this, I guess I would like to hand over to our host, who could probably help me with transitioning to our next presenters.
Thank you so much for that presentation, Alan. Um, you do have a lot of questions actually in the Q&A section. So um, he is going to be answering those. We also have um, a Q&A session at the end of the webinar. So shortly, um, give me just a second. Okay, so shortly after the second presentation, we're going to have a Q&A session um, where maybe our guest speakers will answer some of your questions live, but they can also type them in the Q&A now um, because there are quite a few of them already. So thank you so much, Alan. We will see you again shortly in the Q&A session. And now we are going to switch it over to our second guest speaker. So um, again, if you are waiting to hear or um, to ask your questions for a bachelor's and master's programs, which I've seen a lot of you asking already. So today we're going to have, um, as I said it at the beginning, I'll say it again, Professor, uh, Professor Dr. Joachim Gebel, and he is Professor of Process Engineering and Thermodynamics at the Rheinwald University of Applied Sciences. So he's going to talk about their mechanical engineering programs, also is going to share a presentation, and again, send your questions in the Q&A and he's going to look at them after the presentation and maybe answer some of them live in the session. So thank you so much, for, um, Professor, for being with us today. I'll let you take over. Okay, I'll share the content in a few seconds. So... Okay, is it available? Can everybody see it? There's me? Is it yes, fine? everything is okay. good. We see it. Everything is good. So, okay, let's get started. Uh, so, I'm Jochen Gehlen. I'm professor for thermodynamics and process engineering at Hochschule rhein -Mahl. This is a picture of our university. It's located in the northwestern part of Germany, near to the River Rhine. So, there is a connection to uh, the region in the south. Just heard about Karlsruhe and Ludwigshafen. If you Simply use a ship from Karlsruhe or Ludwigshafen, then you will come to the northern part of Germany, and then you'll find this new campus uh, called Hochschule Rheinwald. This is located in Kleve. There is another place, another campus at Kamblindport, so we have two companies, um, and it's near to the Ruhrgebiet. Um, I applied 10 years ago, seeing um, these buildings during erection, and I was really excited to have this, to see this atmosphere with the Spoil Canal on the right side and this old building, um, which is our library at the moment. It was a storage for crane in the past. And uh, we have new buildings, new equipment. And uh, there is also the old crane on the campus because it was a harbor in the past due to the River Rhine. It's clear that we have a harbor, and you see it's near to the border to Netherlands, and uh, you need two hours to the North Sea for a weekend trip. So it's really nice there. Okay, the campus is, has a Hochschule of Applied Science, University of Applied Science, relatively small, 7,500 students at Kamp-Lindford and at Kleve, and one of the specific features of our university is nearly 50% of our students are international students. This is a, a special feature and the, let me call it, unique selling point of our university. We have a modern campus, everything is new. And I was, uh, 10 years ago, um, asked, please, Professor, uh, buy what you need. This is your budget. And so I can buy a lot of machines, a lot of demonstration plants, as long as my budget was, <laughs> the budget was available. And so, we, as you can see, very modern machines, very modern laboratories, and as University of Applied Science, the students will work exactly with these machines. So it's not only for demonstration purposes. You will learn, not as a craftsman, but you will learn how to operate most of these machines. So we have a modern campus, a modern environment, and with up-to-date labs and workshops. The bachelor program is a program uh, of a seven semester. Why seven, not six? Because as a university of applied science, we are of the opinion that it's really necessary to do an internship. 
So even on the level of a bachelor um, student, it's mandatory that you have an internship, one semester internship, or a semester abroad. The semester abroad is for German students, especially for students coming from abroad. We warmly recommend to try to find a job as an intern. And by my opinion, it's a very important issue as an engineer to know how machines are operating, how plants are operating, and to learn um, how you have to collaborate with workers and engineers in real life situations. The program is entirely taught in English without any exceptions. This is not only valid for the mechanical engineering program, also for the industrial engineering program and also for the mechatronics engineering program. All engineering programs at our faculty are taught entirely in English. There are language courses, especially language courses in German, but there were also some requirements regarding English knowledge. You heard about TOEFL and so on. Check the respective internet page to find further information regarding this one. I will tell you a little bit about the content because I'm an engineer. I'm a process engineer and I'm a specialist in seawater desalination. And our program is a kind of project. And the project is in my case, seawater desalination. This picture shows a big seawater desalination plant in Northern Africa. So you see international project, um, and this plant is able to produce 20 million liters of fresh water per day from seawater, 20,000 cubic meters, 20 million liters. And this is a typical job of a process engineer, respectively a mechanical engineer. And I will guide you through this project, and I will explain you our syllabus um, by showing what's necessary to design, to erect, and to operate such a plant. How to start? I'll do it very fast because time is limited. But I think that you will get an insight in the different steps. So what's the problem? And engineers are always, has always been problem solvers, and we are still problem solvers. How to solve the water problem on our Earth? OK, if there is no rain, or if there is no water available by groundwater reservoirs or something like this. There are ideas regarding green desert, or there are a need to build a new shopping mall at, or in Abu Dhabi. So what do we need to develop such a project and to solve this problem? The first, what we need are the soft skills, and it's involved in our curriculum. Soft skills regarding cross-cultural management and creativity, the second semester, technology and innovation management in the seventh semester. It's really mandatory. And second, you have to know how to get it from the sea, how to obtain fresh water from the sea, and what are the costs. That's why even a mechanical engineer today must be able to do a kind of cost-benefit analysis. That's why in the first semester, we start with business economics. And in the seventh semester, you learn about entrepreneurship. And in the fourth semester, you learn about fundamentals of law, investment, and financing in a special focus field, which is called technical sales. And once again, cross-cultural management is a very important issue because the location of such a project, if it's Australia or if it's Abu Dhabi or Spain, it's quite different. And you need an idea about the culture and the cultural background uh, to solve all of the problem, how to develop such a plant. And now, next phase, it's planning phase. And now it starts to become a little bit more mechanical or mechanical engineering-like. We have to provide mass and energy balances. That's why heat transfer, thermodynamics, math, it's all included in our program. That's clear. Technical drawing must be involved. So we have, therefore, math in the first semester. We have thermodynamics in the third semester, engineering, drawing, and design. We have 
design of plants in the fourth semester in the focus field process engineering, and so on. We need a lot of math because um, you have to distribute, in this case, the water over tubes and then such an evaporator. And to design such an evaporator, which is a part of our desalination plant, which is manufactured in the workshop, by the way, you need statics, strength of materials, applied strength of materials. And to do these calculations, very often finite element methods are required. So we have a focus field which is called simulation and validation. For those who are really interested more than bit in math and simulation technologies. All the others, we have also the opportunity to learn how to build such a heat exchanger. This is the core of this evaporator, such a heat exchanger. By the way, 11,000 tubes, nine meter long, manufactured from copper nickel. And it's clear that you need knowledge about product design. How to design such a heat exchanger? How to manufacture it? And how to check quality? And so we have in the fourth semester modules called product design, manufacturing technology, quality, and product management. And once again, materials. We have corrosion, and we have to take care about chemistry of materials, metallic materials and testing, material testing and failure analysis. So it's really, really close to practical issues. Next step, we have to erect this plant. These are another units. We have at this site six units with 20,000 cubic meters per day during erection. And you see what's necessary to be site manager. And mechanical engineers very often are site manager during the erection phase. Once again, business economics and product management is mandatory. Call the parts coming from all around the world. You need an idea about technical investment planning and purchasing. You need something about global economy and trade because the material comes from, I don't know, from China, the steel. The plant is manufactured in South Korea. The boiler in this plant was from Italy and the heat exchanger was shipped from South Korea to this side to North Africa. So you need something to know about production and logistics. You see, such a project shows you what's necessary in the modern world to be a good mechanical engineer. It's different. 100 years ago, you're not dealing with the global market. You're not dealing with cultural difficulties. We have student projects so that you can apply this. A very important and interesting project is our submarine team with one of my colleagues, Professor McGill. He is in the middle, this guy in the middle with the cap. He is really fascinated from men-driven submarines. And there is always a team taking part at international competitions. We have also a small racing team. You see, this is our first prototype of the e-racing team. And for the process engineers, there is a beer brewing team so that you can learn how to brew beer and you can also drink it. And we have also a small plant to de-alcoholize the beer. And um, this is the job of the process engineer, by the way. So this was a fast ride through our program. We'd be very happy to welcome you at Hochschule Rheinwald, we usually start in the winter term, and you see the beginning is always a feast at the campus to welcome all the students. This was 2019, 2020, it was a pity, this was canceled. We hope that it may, might be taking place in 2021, but nobody knows. So, okay, this was a short introduction, more from the perspective of an engineer, because all other issues are available on our homepage. So I'm a professor. Um, I'm not involved in all details regarding the application process, but we have specialists in our team who can help you uh, if you have 
questions regarding application processes and so on. But as a new university, we need a profile and I'll try to show you that Hochschule rhein mahl is a modern university, an international environment and would be very happy to welcome you next year. Thanks a lot. This was my presentation. I'll stop sharing now. <laughs> In my Perfect. Back. <laughs> Thank you so much for your presentation. I really appreciate having so much detailed information um, from the best source. So now we... Now we have time for questions. We have plenty of time. There's 15 minutes. If we need to go over, we can. So um, we have a lot of questions sitting in the Q&A. I've looked over them and sort of um, collected them into topics from what people are asking most. So um, everybody, um, all our guest speakers, feel free to come back and join now. Um, you can all answer questions as you like. So the first batch of questions that I see sitting in the Q&A are regarding job pl placement and employability after graduation. So um, I will say one thing about that. Any student that graduates from a German university is eligible to have a, an 18 month visa where they search for a job within your field. So if you're an international student and you're thinking, well, what happens when I graduate? I just have to go the next day. That's not how it works. Um, your student visa will, I mean, it won't automatically turn into one. There's an application and a bureaucratic process, but you have an 18 month visa after you graduate where you search for a job in your field, keyword in your field. Um, so you have um, more than a year to find a job, but how does it work? Is there help with job placement at um, in, in each of the programs? Um, maybe each of you can elaborate on, on job placement and maybe some information about students um, getting employed after graduating from their programs. All right. Well, I'll gladly um, start by saying I also run some of the career workshops. Um, so before I worked in admissions and recruiting, which I do now, I was actually for eight years um, a member of the International Department for Career Services for another German public university. So I have quite a lot of experience in this field. As an international student myself, I was also um, went through the job seekers visa. And during this time period for these 18 months, I was actually allowed to work on the side. My side job became my full-time job, um, which is something that happens in Germany quite a lot, is you just sort of soft transition into different positions. Um, one of the things that I can say is at the KIT, we have uh, so job, um, so training uh, programs available. So you can participate in career service workshops, which will help get you set up for the job market. Um, a part of the CBS program, which is the 7,000 uh, so extra program, is actually classes on things like negotiations, how to talk about things like salary and getting a starting job contract. Um, so, but both students of the KIT and the CBS have the possibility to participate in career fairs. Um, they get to meet with uh, so job providers. One of the important things about Kai School is it's located next to a lot of major manufacturing companies, such as Mercedes-Benz, Siemens, Zeiss, Bosch, Adidas, Porsche, and more. So there is a possibility to work for major international corporations. And usually students will be able to work something out as a working student or through their, um, or through their uh, bachelor's thesis. So these are many of the options that are available and we of course will support you along the way. Perfect, thank you so much for that input. Um, Professor Dr. Gabriel, would you like to uh, provide some insight also regarding employability and finding a job afterwards? Yeah, that's a good question. So uh, I heard already from, from Tobias, he said, okay, studying mechanical engineering is a tough job. So that's really, so starting with an idea and with a dream, that's good to know. But first you have to focus on the essentials. That means to become a good engineer. And on, on the top, there is always room for good engineers. So that's clear, that's clear. So as a new university, we have not that much experience with uh, employability, but I know that a lot of our students are now with BMW, also with car industry. They are with Audi, they are all, everywhere. Uh, for sure, it depends. It depends what you want. Some questions are dealing with, is it necessary to do a master? No, it's not necessary. 
because the idea of the bachelor is that you have a degree and you can apply with this degree. I know from students who work for five years in the industry and they are now head of a department because uh, five years in a good medium-sized company means that you are uh, very fast uh, regarding your career. So that it's up to you what, what, what do you want. If you want to become an, a, a researcher, then it's clear that you better do your master and do your also kind of PhD job. But with a bachelor degree, a lot of students find jobs in medium-sized um, uh, companies, dealing with heat exchanger, dealing with heating, ventilation, air conditioning, and a lot of suppliers for car industry. And all they see that I showed you such a seawater desalination plant, it consists of, I don't know, 100 pumps, simply pumps. So the pump is a little bit a big market. We're trying to help our students in so far that we provide them with a recommendation letter. Um, however, the recruitment process in the big companies is nowadays completely done via internet. So to be prepared uh, regarding an interview is something we are doing, but it's not our first job. Maybe um, Mrs. Gerland, who's also on board, uh, maybe she can add something. She's more, much more familiar regarding these things. Maybe you can invite them, doesn't mean. Invite her. She's on board. I think so, yeah. <laughs> yeah, can but I <laughs> actually, I'm, I don't think I'm the expert to answer this question, but I would invite all oh. students who have a question to um, look at Facebook for Ryan Wild University. Um, our students and also our staff is very active there. So if you have specific questions, which we can't answer now, people there are very helpful and always happy to help you with that. So please look up um, Hochschule Rheinwahl or Rheinwahl University of Applied Sciences on Facebook and you find a lot of information there and a lot of helpful people who help you with that. Thank you so much. So the, the next topic or batch of questions that um, we, we have is, Similar to job placement, but it's a little different, and that's internships. So, Professor Dr. Gable, you mentioned in your presentation how important internships are, and 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 how most of them are mandatory. Um, so, how, what what is the placement? Is there placement assistance for internships, especially in in mandatory programs? What types of companies are students interning at, and how important is German for international students whenever it comes to finding an internship? Yeah, that's a very important issue. Yeah. So if people think that, okay, in German, there are international companies like um, Siemens or uh, Bosch and uh, so on. But regarding internship, um, you have to see that a lot of medium-sized companies do offering very, very interesting um, positions as an intern. And there, German is mandatory. It's not necessary that you are able to communicate in German fluently, but to introduce yourself and small talk and all these things, that's, that's mandatory. Otherwise you do not have, let me say frankly, <laughs> any chance to get a job. Um, the main advantage is that students who are able to speak English fluently are, are very often um, have an advantage in the Netherlands. So this is near to, to uh, clever and a lot of in terms of doing, are done in, in, in Netherlands because they are a little bit more <clears throat> sorry, <clears throat> um, open regarding language and English is second language for them. But German is a very, very important issue. And they should start from the very beginning to learn German. That's it. Thanks for that. That's a really important point. Um, I will say that, I mean, I didn't study mechanical engineering, but the first thing I did as part of my fellowship was a three month intensive course, just learning German for six hours a day for three months. So it's very important. Um, but um, Alan, uh, could you please give us some information also about internships and, and maybe types of companies and if there's any maybe placement assistance with that? 
All right, well, thanks for asking. So one of the good things about the um, KIT is our proximity to the metropolitan area of Frankfurt. And like I said, our history with mechanical engineering means there's a lot of companies that are located in this amalgamation near and around us. So some of these companies I mentioned earlier, such as Mercedes-Benz, Siemens, Zeiss, Bosch, Adidas, and Porsche, you'll be able to reach out to um, as a student. And often you can just find listings um, through some of the resources on our university campus. Uh, so job hunting web pages through career services, you can attend career fairs, or um, if you're just looking for a side job, usually you can just find that posted in the internet. Um, a lot of my friends in the later semesters started working side jobs in order to get professional experience and just a little bit of money on the side. I would say the majority of international students are looking for something like that, but that should not be the main way you finance your studies. I just want to make that clear. Um, so later on, you can also, of course, in the college program of the CBS, um, participate in our Smart Factory program, where we will actually set you up with Bosch, Siemens, or Zeiss for a project in your area of expertise, fully conducted in English, in order to give you experience in that. That's our Smart Factory program. We also have Smart Science, which is going to be for the more research-oriented side. The KIT is a research powerhouse, so we'll hook you up with professors and academics in there, or you can go into the leadership side if you want to get more into business and self-development. So those are three of the programs that you can go into if you want to get some more job experience in specific fields related to what you want to go into for the future. Or you can just do the go it alone route, as I said, by contacting our resources through the internet. Perfect. Thank you so much. So um, the last two topics are, I, I kind of want to put them together, and it's about um, chances of getting acceptance into the programs. And the first one is eligibility requirements. Well, what's the minimum grade I need? And do I need this? And do I have to have experience? And so on. Um, and the second topic, so that's the first. The second topic is about scholarships and funding. So I want to ask this kind of in one and one question to you both. So maybe if there are any special scholarships, you can mention them. But um, students, I will post shortly in the chat um, a, a very comprehensive article of many different scholarship institutions, many which you probably haven't heard of here in Germany, that have funding for international students. I will post that shortly. I want our guest speakers to focus on the study program. So I wanted to ask, when it comes to getting accepted, what would you tell students? Because so many are asking, well, what's the minimum requirement? What is What do you think the most important thing is when it comes to applying? Is it um, a, a combination of you know, your, your grade from your previous degree plus experience plus motivation letter or what is going to make students stand out? These are competitive programs. They're very international. And so maybe some advice from, from each of you for both of your programs and, and anyone can feel free to put input because so many students are asking, well, can, what's the minimum grade and what's going to help them? So maybe you can give some. My well, answer is very fast and very easy. Start sure. early enough. Start early enough. It's very important. Start early enough because it's a long process and follow exactly the instruction given on the respective homepage, on the respective internet access. They are all different. And my problem is very often that students are, do, are really applying too late. It's too late because there are so many levels, especially for, for application, applicants from non-UU dates. And so start early enough because we have so many levels. Before you talk about truffle and all these things, there are much more levels, much more hurdles you have to jump over. So very often we have the problem that students are coming to us in November, in November, because they get uh, the permission in August and then they have to apply for visa and then they're coming in November. So the first semester is lost more or less. So start early enough and follow exactly the instructions. And so we have a student service center at Hochschule Ranval. They are the specialists. But if you call them in the very beginning, they also can say you do the send the application wire. Um, Onisys, this is in Berlin. They check all the requirements and then it comes to Hochschule Ranval on another level. So that's my recommendation to all students, early enough and exactly as said. 
Nice. That, that's a really great, that's exactly what I say when, when I have presentations about how to apply, apply in advance. UniAssist, for example, is, is back, especially not even considering COVID-19, which they are backed up because of the pandemic. Um, when it comes to any deadlines and, and German bureaucracy, I mean, there it's pretty strict, and I would say it's strict anywhere in the U.S. as well. Make sure you have all the documents. Oh, but can I turn this? Typically, no. If you don't have a document, the only exception is if you're still in your degree program and you apply while you're still enrolled. That's typically the only document you can turn in later is after you graduate. But again, you said it very well. Thank you so much, Professor Dr. Gabo. Uh, send everything in early. So, um, Alan, why don't you give us your input, some feedback for students, some advice on what's the most important thing to consider? Thank you, Yasmin. So um, I'm sorry to play the villain here, but also working in admissions, one of the big things that I have an issue with is people applying way too late. Um, as Yasmin said, if you don't get your stuff in by the application deadline, we don't make exceptions. So sorry about it. Um, one of the things I would also like to say is for the minimums, it depends specifically on where you're from, what school leaving certificate you have, um, and it's a very individual thing. The application to our program is also holistic, so we do look at your letter of motivation, and we do look at you as a well-rounded applicant. So if you want to know more about the admission requirements, feel free to reach out to the people from my German university, or feel free to reach out to the um, individual university and department as they'll be able to give you the information specifically. This is something that you need to know when you're applying to each program, as each one will have its own individual nuances here. But what I can say about our program is that um, if you are just squeaking by on the minimum, the chance that you'll get in is still going to be uh, there. Um, German universities are pretty um, lenient when it comes to if you meet the requirements you get in, but do know that you might be in for a rough ride. So study hard and try not to just make the minimum. That's really well said. Or um, what I tell students who maybe have are just barely making that minimum grade is I tell them, well, you have to write a killer motivation letter and explain why you have that minimum. Maybe some mitigating circumstances, some life-changing thing, or you have a family and you were working and had a family and support something. You have to explain your reasoning um, and and, with a motivation letter or or some extra activities. So again, you put it really well. Thank you so much for that. Um, did we have, um, Doris, did you have any input when it comes to admissions or are you, is it okay without? I just saw you turn your camera on. If you wanted to put some input when it comes to admissions, maybe um, from your um, experience. Yeah, I, I would totally stress what, what the two others said. So apply early and try to get as many information as you can through the internet. So our university offers for our applicants a great overview. And since our applications go through UniAssist, it's also very recommended to check their websites. So all important information and usually almost all the questions you have are already answered there. So my advice would be to read carefully through all web pages you can find on the topic. Thank you so much. I know all of the questions that we're getting are, well, what is this minimum? What is this? And um, while verbally we can tell you, sure, our guest speakers ju did just tell you in their presentation, but having this down in writing um, and look at the course websites, I posted them several times in the chat. I also responded to some of you. Look at the course websites carefully for the admissions requirements. And if there is some very special circumstance where there is a gray area and it's uncomfortable clear if you meet that requirement, that's when you should contact the admissions offices of that program and do that in advance. The application, don't wait until the application deadline is next week and you want to see if you're still eligible. They're, they're probably, they have a lot of emails and they're going to be less happy to respond to you when they see your reply, you're sending them an email three days before the deadline. So again, contact them directly if you have questions. If you, you can also, um, find contact information on our website. We link you to all university pages. You can email us at info at mygermanuniversity.com. And we also answer your questions there should you have them and we'll forward any emails regarding programs to the universities. So 
Thank you, Topia. So yeah, there is our contact information. So some of you are asking questions about general English language requirements. And we have an article about this and we explain to you the different language requirements. If you want to study in English or German for different universities, this is kind of a standard. Um, and it's also on our study finder. You can search also via your English requirements. So let's say you have a certain score in your IELTS or TOEFL, you can just search using that to see programs you're eligible for. So thank you so much for joining us. There is our study finder and you have our email. Please feel free to um, recommend us on Facebook or Google. We do all of our services for students for free and we never ever charge for our services for you. So please, what we ask for is a nice rating on Google or Facebook. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much to our guest speakers um, for this great presentation. I will see you shortly in a feedback round. Um, and for all of you who joined us, please direct any further questions to our email or to um, the contact information on the course websites, which were shared with you today. Thank you so much, everyone. Have a great uh, rest of your day or evening, depending on where you join us from. Bye-bye.